The federal government on Wednesday claimed that it has solved the power outage being experienced across the country. However, the government blamed pipeline vandalism, grid collapses, among other challenges, as causes of the recurrent nationwide blackout. The Minister of Power, Abubakar Aliyu, disclosed this while briefing State House correspondents. This was after the week's virtual Federal Executive Council meeting, FED meeting, presided over by Vice President Yamil But well, We are now being joined by O'Neill Lajuwomi, an ex energy expert. We're glad to have you with us, O'Neill. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Thanks for having me. Well, the national grid collapsed twice in 48 hours. It's 206 in a decade now. All right. So 206 times in 10 years. In 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> so add that to the current fuel crisis <laughs> that Nigerians are going through. And, I mean, <laughs> and, and, and just paint a picture. You probably have a horror movie staring at I you. I know. I know, right? I think there's a joke about every Nigerian should make it to heaven because <laughs> of the hardship. I must say it's really hard being a Nigerian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really sad. Okay, so this is more often than not blamed on the activities of vandals. Sure. How come we are at this point, over and over again, we have all these kind of uh, excuses being made. How is it that a country as big as this country cannot secure its facilities? No, I really think it's uh, on seriousness, uh, in, in, I mean, in the Nigerian entity itself, the government on its own, not being able to pivot past where we are at the moment. Uh, I'm, I'm, also, I'm afraid to tell you there's no solution to this now, uh, relying on the greed. So if you look at Nigeria, Nigeria uh, power sector um, is heavily relied on, on the national grid. And I explained the grid is an tr um, interconnected transmission network, which is um, connected to generators, gas and gas generators and you know, thermal plants, hydropower, whatnot, that serves a wide uh, range of uh, a load. So any disruption along this grid will result to collapse. And, and some of them, for example, from what we've learned in the, uh, yesterday, the grid collapse, like, like you've rightfully said, was caused by um, gas uh, vandalism and, uh, well, unplanned, um, you know, uh, downtime in the power, one of the power plants. So the way the grid is uh, um, modeled is there must be a stable grid at every point in time. Right now, we're floating around 4,000 megawatts in Nigeria, which is a 4,000 megawatts so for 198 for, million people. Yeah, we've been on it for a long time. South Africa generates 58.56. Is it up to 60, 60 now? 60,000 megawatts. 60,000 megawatts, and they are just 60, 58 60 million, million people. people. Correct, Maureen. Correct, correct. And we're doing 4,000 for a population of about 200 million people. So it tells you that we're in terrible, terrible situation. We're in a terrible situation. Uh, I mean... TCN admitted that the grid collapse is not going to end. It's not going to be solved in any, any way. Like, I, I've been clamoring for decentralization of power, all right? You cannot be generating power in far, you know, up high. By the way, the three power plants that, that caused the grid collapse has been identified. You have the Okbai, uh, Ajip, you have the Calabar power plant, and then you also have um, uh, the... Is it the Shiroro? No, not, not the Shiroro. Okbai, Calabar... And um, I think the one by NDPHC, Ninja Data Power Holding Company. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, um, I think that. But, but anyway, anyway, just three anyway, of them. Let's, let's move on. Three of them collapsed, and somewhere uh, as a result of vandalism, pipeline vandalism, and then there was uh, unplanned, uh, unscheduled um, uh, maintenance that just the, the power plant went down. Uh, but of course, when this instability occurs, the power drops on the grid and it collapses. So that's just basically what's happening. But again, there could have been a solution. Uh, I'll let you speak and maybe I'll come back to that. Well, one would have thought that, you know, we had NEPA. Yeah. And then a whole lot of stuff happened and the discos and the jenkos came on board. And we thought, with all of that, we're probably going to have some sort of relief. Yeah. I don't know. What's the difference between when it was NEPA and now that is? Well, the the, 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 the um, power sector was privatized in 2013, and that's when uh, the distribution companies were, you know, privatized. And then you have the generation companies, Jenkos and Discos. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, that was meant to increase the investments uh, in the in the sector. But uh, unfortunately, there's been a lot of lapses, you know, um, coupled with there's a lot of blame game. Uh, one is uh, the federal government not keeping to the terms, you know, of, of uh, that the disco signed on to. For example, you could maybe I think uh, yesterday or so, 
the discourse that distribution companies uh, complain about the debt, which is about 140 billion being owed by some of the uh, federal government institutions. So, uh, coupled with the tariff that was being used as the, on the for the simulation of the of the of the tariff, sorry, the FX, you know, so there's a whole lot of a lot of trouble. Um, the issues bob all, all around regulatory framework, all right. Uh, on seriousness about government adhering to the regulation itself, keeping to the regulation. I mean, imagine federal government owing an uh, electricity bill. I mean, how do you expect the discos to co cope? There are very few of the discos that are really able to really um, uh, put their heads over water. So it's just a quagmire we find ourselves in. You know, you started by saying there is no solution to this. Uh, well, the federal government claimed that it has solved the power outage problem. Uh, contrary statement here. Yeah, I mean, Today, I think it was 4.59, the, the minister, Abubakar uh, Aliyu, did mention that it's been restored. The grid has been restored. The grid has been restored. The grid will collapse again uh, because we don't, have, we don't have what is called a spinning reserve. There should be a spinning reserve that backs up the grid, all right? So when you have a drop in the power supply on the grid, it makes it unstable, uns unstable rather, and then the grid shorts, all right? But if you have that situation, there should be a, a spinning reserve that comes in that shoots into the grid and backs up. We don't have that back up. You know, so we have, not, not, I, I've, I've had the privilege of speaking with energy experts such as yourself yeah. over time. And when you listen to them, they, they, they proffer such amazing solutions. They, they, they talk about it a lot. And yeah. we had Bert in Nigeria at some point who yeah. advocated for coal. Sure. Where are we in all of this? So, so the thing is, um, like very well said, you can have coal uh, in Enugu generate power fine uh you could have we have hydropower by the way 80 percent of the of the uh power generation is through gas uh thermal plants 20 percent is hydropower uh you can have solar there's a lot of developments going on in off-grid i must tell you that I, I must give it to uh i mean you may not see it now but there are a lot of people even in rural areas enjoying 24 hours power because their power is decentralized through a solar hybrid mini grid. Mm -hmm. they are currently operating there are universities currently on 24 hours so power. why don't all the states, or yeah. at least a whole a large number of the states, yeah. generate their own That's power? That's exactly what I'm saying about decentralization. The power sector, the power supply must be decentralized. You cannot rely on the grid coming all the way from Sapele to Oshobo, the control center, and then feeding Lagos. It's okay, so what is the problem? Is it that the state governments themselves are not, um, are not active enough? They're not making themselves viable enough? Or is it the federal government stopping them from taking the move? Well, it's been that for a long time. I mean... The regulatory issue around it was a bit faulty. But I understand, I think uh, last month or so, the states were clam clamoring for their own, uh, uh, to be able to generate their own power. I think I said that was passed. I'm not sure. I need to check it out. But if, for example, a, a state as, as serious as Lagos State can provide 24 hours power to a citizen by getting off the national grid. And I'm very tell I'm telling you, there are serious people that can do this. Okay, well, we, we just hope that that happens. Yeah. O'Neill Lajwami, energy expert, has been our guest as we take a look at uh, the energy situation in the country. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.